live stream. This is our Thursday edition live stream. This is where uh, I always introduce to you the plant of the week. So my name is Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Garden and thank you for joining me. Um, so every Thursday I'm talking to you about the plant of the week and right now here at Rogers Gardens uh, we are doing a hummingbird summer event. So we are doing all hummingbird plants. We have tons of different beautiful hummingbird plants all centralized in our middle of our garden here and we have so much hummingbird activity going on right now it's just bonkers uh, every time I walk down there there's hummingbirds all over the place uh, Anna's and Alan hummingbirds fighting with each other over the nectar it's so fun to watch and we're loaded with butterflies too so between the hummingbirds and butterflies there's a lot of action happening um, the plant of the week this week is penstemon so it's all the plants that I have here um, hummingbirds love these bell-shaped flowers so most really good hummingbird plants have some form of a bell-shaped flower um, they love the nectar from this the butterflies do too actually so it's really great one to have in your garden if you're looking to get uh, wildlife and activity and, and just some life into your garden it's a really beautiful one um, some penstemons are actually California natives uh, so this margarita bop one I have here is a pen, uh, California native the color is just so beautiful it's purple and blue and it's just kind of outrageous to think that that's a native plant with that kind of coloration on it uh, absolutely gorgeous we have tall guys we have short guys I really really love this one it's so pretty this one's called rock candy uh, it's rock candy blue isn't that beautiful? It's so pretty. It's so cute, nice and compact. Uh, Pensamins uh, really do well in full sun, but they can handle some dappled shade. Uh, they're actually pretty drought tolerant. They don't look like it, but they really are. Um, they need really good drainage. So that's like one of the key things for them is, is really good drainage. Uh, and then they can tolerate a little bit of droughting. So not a ton, uh, but they're definitely not as water hungry as I think they look. I look at this and think wow that plant needs a lot of water <laughs> and really it actually doesn't which is really amazing um penstemons are perennial plants you can grow these in pots as well uh they are really a beautiful kind of showy wow kind of flower so especially if you're doing it in a pot uh you can add really beautiful plants around it little filler plants and stuff around it but this is definitely kind of your wow factor for sure um penstemons really do appreciate being deadheaded so i brought my pruders along with me this margarita bob here definitely needs some deadheading so I'm going to show you how to do that um, when you're looking at so when I'm talking about deadheading I'm talking about cutting off the spent flowers and uh, the spent stems um, so when you look at a flower like this this is beautiful it's got a lot of uh, great buds on it. It's got a lot of really beautiful flowers going on it. So this is great and I'm going to keep it. But when I look at this margarita bop, I have a couple here that are done flowering. Those last two little things right here are just seed pods. So they are done. So to encourage it to continue to flower, I want to take the seed pods off. So the plant thinks, okay, I need to make more because uh, I don't have any seed pods on me at the moment. So you take this stem, you travel down to a set of little leaflets and you cut right above those little leaflets nobody wants to look at a, a you know a dead end stem on there so you don't want kind of anything blunt happening if you cut right in the middle and you have a little blunt end it's very obvious that it's been cut so this does a couple of different things this helps keep this nice and fuller um, and keeps it bushier because where you cut you're going to get new stems coming off of it um, and it also just is nice for it being you know not unsightly like that so I take this one down to about here and give it a nice little cut and I would just go through and do that through the whole entire plant and your whole plant's gonna look brand new um it's gonna send out more uh little flower stems on there you'll get more stalks uh and it'll keep it bushier and nicer and more tidy looking so uh, i find that this is really important to do with your penstemon uh, is just go through and do that that keeps it really beautiful um the only problem i've ever really had with penstemon they seem to be pretty good when it comes to not getting a lot of pests and things like that but i do find that the snails and slugs love these guys uh, so that's why i have right here with me the sluggo um, so this is 
something that's uh, it's an organic uh, snail based uh, or not snail based it's an organic snail bait um, that you can put around down on the ground underneath all the plants and stuff the snails eat it um, and then what happens is they can't eat anymore so then they just crawl away someplace and they die um, but it's just something you spread around on the ground um, if it's in an area that gets wet often you may need to reapply this occasionally um, but this is really a great product to use and really helpful because I do find that the snails tend to like these. They're so soft and tender uh, that they're just perfect snail and slug food. Um, when it comes to fertilizing, just a regular all-purpose fertilizer is fine um, on these. Um, when you're dealing with natives, uh, if you are new to the native world, um, natives really um, don't need a lot of water once established, but I do find with penstemons, we call them tender perennials. So they are a perennial plant, uh, but they do kind of die down a little bit in the winter time, look a little unsightly sometimes. Um, if you're in cooler regions than we are here in Southern California, uh, they usually don't overwinter uh, for you. So they are more kind of like an annual in that, in that regard. But here they will overwinter for us. Um, when you're dealing with a California native type, uh, it might die down significantly. So don't dig those roots out because it should come back for you. Um, and then make sure that you're putting this in a zone where you're giving it the adequate kind of water. Uh, they like a lot of supplemental water in uh, the end of winter and in through spring, but once we start getting into the summer, they don't want to be too wet because that's not what they're used to here in Southern California. We don't have rainy summers. That's very unusual for them. Um, so this is a great one uh, for putting with maybe your um, California native milkweed, or um, we talked last week about some sages. There's a lot of sages that are natives. Uh, there's uh, monkey flower, which there are some of the California natives as well. So this would be great with that. You could make a whole entire native hummingbird garden, which would be amazing. Um, but you can even get away with things that aren't natives that attract the hummingbirds as well. So these are all really great examples of that. I love the garnets and things like that. There's um, all different kinds of uh, penstemons, natives and unnatives, um, and we have tons of them here. So it's a really, really fun time to come down, um, check out all the hummingbird activity. We have beautiful little holders uh, for hummingbird nectar that you can put in your hand. Um, we have an area where we can um, get it filled up with nectar for you so you can see if you can get one of the hummingbirds to eat out of your hand here. Um, it's just so fun to watch them in the garden. Uh, we have a lot of the Annas and we have a lot of the Allens um, right now. The Annas have the kind of pink throat. The Allens have the orange throat. Uh, the Allens are a little bit smaller, um, but it's just such a fun time right now to come into Rogers Gardens. If you haven't already signed up for our email list, please do so because you'll find out about all the really fun things that we're doing here um, before we even do them so you can be in the know and be ready to come down and visit us. Um, also too, make sure you subscribe to um, our YouTube page. If you haven't checked that out, we always post these lives there. Um, and you can check all that information out there as well. Um, and then, of course, you're probably watching on Instagram or Facebook. So uh, if you have any friends that are really into hummingbirds, make sure you tag them down below uh, so they know about all this great stuff that we have going on. We have all kinds of beautiful feeders as well, beautiful glass feeders and all kinds of stuff. Do we have any questions? Yes, we do. We have yeah. one question. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Someone has asked if the sluggo will affect the lizards in their garden. No, actually it won't. So um, it's something that is uh, phosphorus based. Um, so it actually breaks down and will add stuff into your soil too, which is actually good for your plants. Uh, but it's a pet uh, a pet safe uh, brand. And it, when you open it up and you look at it, it almost kind of looks like um, white ice cream sprinkles. It's really kind of unusual looking. Um, and then you just put it down on the ground and it slowly uh, disintegrates down into the ground too. So it's not super unsightly, but if you're having a party, maybe not want to put that down on the ground before that because it is kind of looks like someone just opened up a thing of jimmies and threw it all over the place so uh make sure that uh you're waiting before you're gonna have company over or something like that uh but it is something that will degrade down into the ground so if you have a really bad infestation you want to make sure that you're putting it up underneath the base of your plants um and remember that it is gonna disintegrate so you may have to keep reapplying that but uh it's really great once you kind of handle your slug problem it's it's 
pretty good. I thankfully, knock on wood, uh, I have managed to uh, handle my slug and snail problem and I haven't gotten anything in in a while. But sometimes when you bring new plants in, there's a little baby snail in there and then that starts the process all over again. So it's always a good thing to have in the ground or have in your arsenal to put on the ground. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yeah. So there's there are two questions here. I'll ask them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's about timing. When's the best time to plant these plants? And yeah. then when, what time of day is best to fertilize and use things like sluggo? Okay, yeah. Um, so this is something that's gonna flower, um, it starts flowering in the spring and goes all the way through summer, even a little bit into fall um, for us, depending on the variety. Um, and then one thing I do want to point out, I think I turned it specifically, um, we put these really beautiful stickers on all these so you know what the hummingbird attracting plants are that we have here. Um, and they do kind of vary in sizes. Some are small, some are tall. Um, so it's a really great time to get them. You can get them absolutely into the ground now, um, even starting into spring, into fall as well we we do great planting in fall uh weather here in southern california we're we're kind of a little bit backwards uh, a lot of the stuff that people do in springtime in other states we're already starting in the winter time so we're a little ahead of the game just because of the weather here um so getting in the ground is a great time now you can even start in the springtime um as well and then as for fertilizing um they're not particularly heavy feeders so i just use a general kind of all-purpose or a rose and flower fertilizer and I only do that once a month uh, it's just a granular uh, we carry a variety called down to earth that I really really like um, and I just sprinkle that on the ground about once a month and you can really do that at any time but when you're dealing with a granular um, instead of scratching it in uh, it's best to water it into the ground uh, so that way you're not affecting the roots and stuff too much and you don't really want to water midday it's always better to do that early in the morning if you can or even in the evening is okay but the morning is really your optimum time. For putting down the sluggo, you can do that whenever. Uh, it's it's something that you can apply kind of whenever you want. I would say reapplying it every two weeks to be on top of that would probably be the best. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. uh, someone's asked, do you carry doculate snails? Um, no, we do carry some um, ladybugs and we carry beneficial nematodes. We carry um, the uh, little egg uh, for um, praying mantis. Sometimes we carry the snails. We haven't recently. Um, you know, what's interesting about those snails, if you ever look in the container, what they actually use to feed those snails, lettuce. <laughs> so, uh, when they don't have other snails to eat. So if you don't know what those are, uh, they are carnivorous snails. It's kind of scary. Uh, they eat other snails and slugs, but in a pinch, they will also eat plants. So um, I've used them before in the past. Um, I They will eat your slug bait, uh, which will kill them. Um, so it's not something we have currently at the moment, but we do carry beneficial things. The ladybugs are really fun. I love doing the praying mantis. It's the best. Uh, they're such a funny, crazy looking little egg sack and then I love just putting it somewhere and then going and checking and checking because when they hatch you get hundreds of them and they're so cute and tiny and just these little miniature praying mantis that grow into the big guys that eat just about anything so uh they're a really great one to have in your garden awesome thank you we have a question mm -hmm. here that says do you have plumeria in stock and mm. what kind Hi, Suzanne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Suzanne is the other person who you see do the live streams on Tuesday. And uh, this is a running joke between the two of us. But yes, we do have plumeria in stock and we have dwarf plumeria in stock. And we have plumeria in stock right now. Some varieties are so funny. There's champagne. Uh, there's like Pinot Grigio. Uh, there are all these wine uh, and spirit named uh plumeria right now that are really really pretty but we have a very large stock of plumeria in right now awesome thank yeah. you and thank yeah. you suzanne for that wonderful question thank you suzanne <laughs> suzanne so. hetrick you'll see her on tuesdays she does the tuesday uh, 9 30 live streams she always brings you all kinds of fun topics about like what to do in your garden right now and things like that on thursdays we always talk about the plant of the week uh so i'm always introducing that to you and this saturday you can see both of us live and in person uh, 
uh, we are going to be doing our second live in-person uh, seminar. I'm so, so excited about that. Um, we're going to be talking about hummingbird gardening. So we're going to be talking about all the different kinds of plants that you can use for hummingbird gardening. We're going to talk about all the different types of hummingbirds. Uh, we're going to be showing you feeders and going over all that kind of stuff and how to be a responsible hummingbird gardener. Um, it's a really, really fun thing. Um, it's so fun to do things in person and live with you. Um, when you come to the live one, um, we give you a 10% coupon too to use in the store for that day. So uh, you see anything that kind of sparks your interest you can buy that and get 10% off. Um, we will be streaming it as well. So if you can't make it into the store, you will be streaming. But if you make it in the store, you get a coupon, which is really awesome. So make sure you come into that. That will be 930 this Saturday. Uh, it's the 16th of July. Uh, and it's going to be down in our amphitheater. So we can see all of your smiling faces in person. Uh, and we'll answer all of your questions. And if you are doing this still through um, Instagram or Facebook and you can't make it out here uh, live, with us we will still be answering your questions there as well so if you can't come in tune in but if you can come in you get that 10 percent off coupon uh, we're going to have a lot of really fun unusual plants uh, that the hummingbirds love that i'm really excited i just caught confirmation for some of the varieties we're going to get so they're really special and i'm super excited to introduce you all to those awesome we're very excited thank you yeah. so much sarah there are a few more questions before we go okay yeah someone's asked if you could quickly just show the plants and name yeah. what yeah. you have there so this one here um is this this cute little guy i love this it's called rock candy blue isn't that cute and this is a smaller variety this one only gets uh 12 to 18 uh inches tall and wide uh that beautiful blue colored flower um going with the blue this is the margarita bop this one i need to clean up a little bit uh so don't judge it too harshly but I picked it so I could show you how to clean it up uh, so this is the margarita bop and this one um, is uh, uh, actual California native here uh, super super pretty blue flowers this is a little bit taller uh, and a little bit more kind of wild looking than that little compact guy um, but this is a California native so great for co uh, comboing up with your other California natives this one here this is also a native. Uh, so this one gets uh, much, much taller. So this one gets kind of a rosy blue violet kind of uh, color flower on it as well. Um, but this one actually gets to be about two feet tall and about three feet wide. So this gets uh, really big. And you can kind of tell the difference when you're looking at the foliage. This one has a much smaller kind of foliage to it, which is kind of pretty indicative of a lot of the California native stuff. Um, and then the Cal how you know things are California natives is they usually have this California native sign on there, which is really kind of awesome. Um, and then these will get the hummingbird stickers as well when they go back into the uh, back into the garden. Um, and this one is garnet. Um, I love garnet. Um, this one's so pretty. These, both of these are garnet, so this is a little bit smaller. This guy's a little bit bigger. Um, but these ones get tall too as well, and they have these really beautiful uh, pink flowers that are stripy inside. I wish I could show you that stripe. It's just so cute. Uh, but the bees and the, and the butterflies like these as well. Um, so they have a really beautiful little white striped throat inside um, and they're just so pretty and these get um, taller than these little short compact guys. But we ha we'll have even more varieties in. There's hundreds and hundreds of different penstemon varieties and colors and stuff. Uh, it's just such a cool plant. This was one that I was introduced to early in my gardening career um, and kind of became obsessed with and had like one of every single one uh, but they're just so pretty and different and they're they're pretty low maintenance with the exception of um deadheading them pretty much awesome thank you for sharing those yeah so <laughs> here's a hot topic okay on facebook and on instagram people mm -hmm. want to know about praying mantis do we carry them are they bad for hummingbird gardens so it would take a really big praying mantis to eat a hummingbird. <laughs> it is possible they can. Um, I doubt any of ours are ever going to make it to that kind of maturity. Uh, and they're definitely going to go for the smaller little guys. And the hummingbirds are fast, the fastest flying bird there is. Um, so they could, but I would not. Be concerned about that at all um you may see that in some of like nature videos and things like that but it's a very rare thing that that's going to happen um the humming uh the praying mantis there's usually two um little egg sacs in a container um and then what happens is when you think about anything that eats another bug uh when the when they hatch they will eat each other <laughs> to a degree until they kind of can scurry off and get away so it's kind of survival of the fittest um but they're really really great for the garden. I love doing it. I do praying mantis every single year. They 
they don't discriminate. They will eat anything. They'll eat each other. Um, they will eat ladybugs if they come across them. Um, but I don't really worry about that because they eat all of the bad stuff in my garden as well. Um, and then it's really kind of fun later in the year when I'm looking around and I find a bigger one and I think, oh, hi, baby. Look, you're all grown up. So it's kind of a cool thing. Um, they're really interesting. Uh, they usually move pretty slowly. So sometimes you can even pick them up and hold them. So it's kind of a cool thing. But uh, we do carry praying mantis. I know we have them currently in stock too right now at the moment and ladybugs as well awesome thank you one more yeah. question on praying mm -hmm. mantis yeah um someone has said i would like to get some praying mantis sacks where's a good place to put the sacks okay we should maybe do a live stream about this maybe. that would be fun <laughs> um so the praying mantis sacks um when you look at them um they're very strange and unusual and you can always see the stick that the praying mantis built the egg sack around so they cut those sticks um so what i typically do is i'll put them at the base of more of a woody type of plant um and i'll set them up against some Sometimes I'll even string them into a plant. So I'll um, kind of wrap a string around it and tie it into something so they're not on the ground um they can be on the ground that's fine they'll hatch in the containers if you leave them in there for too long um so they'll kind of essentially hatch anywhere but i like to put them somewhere where they're a little bit protected because i want to make sure the birds don't get them because the birds will go for them when they're small too um so i make sure that they're kind of tucked in a hidden area and then when i tie them in i usually tie them in just so i kind of remember where they're at so i can keep going out just because i love to check on them when they first hatch you get tons and tons and tons of little babies in there but don't leave them in those containers too long because they will hatch in those containers and then they'll eat each other and you'll only have a couple when you open up that container Thanks. yeah which is really <laughs> sad <laughs> yeah um okay uh i'm gonna share one more question mm -hmm. and a few comments the question um, pretty straightforward. They've asked if you can pot these. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They want good drainage. Um, so just make sure that your pot has adequate drainage in the bottom. Um, I, th there's a lot of controversy about this, but I do not like putting my pots in saucers. Um, I understand that a lot of us have really beautiful travertine, um, you know, patios and things like that. And you want to have a saucer to catch the water that comes out the bottom of your pot. But however, look at the butterfly going by. Um, <laughs> have you ever noticed that when you move a uh, saucer underneath a pot and you look at it and there's a big old ring underneath it anyways? <laughs> so it kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. Um, I love putting my pots on feet so that just lifts them up off the ground so they can drain more um, easily they're not sitting in their own water um, you're not waterlogging your plant you're not creating problems with a lot of um, built-up um, salt that happens a lot um, we have salts in our water and if they're sitting in their own water and absorbing it back up over again that's when you start getting tip burn and things um, on stuff so if you can get away without using a saucer I suggest not using a saucer um, you could use regular regular potting mix for these guys. Um, if you have some cactus mix, you can throw a couple of handfuls into your potting mix for good measure because they do like good drainage, especially if you're dealing with the natives. Uh, make sure that you're um, making sure that drainage is really perfect because they grow naturally in like rocky kind of areas with rocky sand. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. Just a few comments here because yeah. It's great to just yeah, share these. Yeah, absolutely. Um, someone, Pam Jones, thank you. She says, I hope you keep doing these lives on Facebook for us who are not in California. You brighten my day. Aww. I love all the information. Learning so thank much. You. Someone else says, thanks for all the information. And there's a question asking... Um, about the event on Saturday. So can you leave us with the info on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, we this will be our second um, live in-person seminar. Um, we will also be streaming it live as well. Um, we are doing uh, two of them a month. And um, this one we're gonna be doing all about hummingbird gardening. And you can hear the hummingbirds going by right now. <laughs> and I am guarantee you, as you're sitting there and uh, live with us in person, you will just see hummingbirds everywhere, butterflies everywhere. They're all over the place right now. Um, and we'll be talking about um, different hummingbird plants that you can put in your garden to attract the hummingbirds. Um, we're gonna be talking about different types of hummingbirds. We're gonna talk about hummingbird feeders and kind of what the hummingbirds needs are. So it'll be a really, really fun event. Um, we have some really special plants that we're bringing in that I'm super excited about. I just got confirmation that we'll have them. So some unusual, really fun things that the hummingbirds love and that I personally love and are just really different and unique uh, we have hummingbird boxes, like little kits essentially, where it has six plants in the little kit and you can just 
grab a kit. It's all hummingbird friendly stuff and then just take it and go and you have an instant hummingbird garden. Um, we have great feeders, little handheld feeders so you can sit there. Even during my live uh, event, you can sit there and hold them on your hands and maybe you'll get a hummingbird come up to you um, while we're talking live. It'll be both Suzanne and I um, and uh, it'll just be a really fun event and anybody who comes and shows up in person we'll get a 10% uh, coupon too. So yeah. And what time is it again? Oh, it's at 9.30 uh, this Saturday, the 16th. Uh, so please come in. I would love to see you. And it's, it was just so fun doing our first one to, to see all the people that have been behind the screen this whole time during the pandemic. It was really fun to see you all in person. It was really, really kind of touching. It was great. Um, so I'm really, really looking forward to that. So make sure. Um, and again, if you're not on our email list, you won't find out about these things. So please sign up for that email list because uh, you'll know about all the fun things coming up so you won't miss out on anything but if you can't come we will be live streaming that as well for you um, and posting it later onto our Facebook and our Instagram page too yeah awesome okay. well thank you so much for tuning in this has been really really fun uh, I love doing this with you all and it's even funner to do in person so please come to that live event um, and then if you haven't already go to our YouTube page and check that out and subscribe there there's tons of great videos there um, we do all kinds of other videos besides these lives with all different kinds of topics um, and you can go back and see all the varying topics that we've done over the years it's really really exciting um, and then make sure if you have any friends that are interested in hummingbirds tag them down below um, if you missed out on this and you're watching this later you can still leave your comments and we will answer all those comments for you as well so thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate it again my name is sarah smith and be well and be safe and happy gardening everybody bye